via internet and you'd be surprised uh, the people that are watching us on the internet uh, Sister Benoff and I was out to dinner and some lady came she said if, if I would have known you were in there or if I'd have got there a little earlier we'd have bought you dinner we watch you every week and I thought she's probably watching now praise the Lord uh, so you never know who's watching. Amen. Some people you may not think is watching. I had someone tell me not long ago, they said, we get up, we get dressed, and we sit down and we watch the service every week. Amen. And we say praise the Lord to you too. Amen. People are tuning in, and we are thankful for them. Amen. And we pray that the Lord will bless them as he blesses us. People are not coming to church the way that they used to do anywhere. I was talking to a young lady. We stopped and got fish in Circleville at the Captain D's. And we were talking to a young lady there, and she says, we don't go to church anymore. She said, we just sit at home, and we watch it live. Amen. She said, we used to. She said, but mom and dad are getting older now, and so we just sit at home, and we watch it live. But I want to let everyone know that it's good to be able to watch it, but it ain't nothing like being in the midst of the people of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for our convocation that we had this week. We had a wonderful time, and I do want to thank you all who were able to come on Wednesday and to support us. Amen. We thank God for you. We appreciate you being there. And uh, we just want to say thank you. We give honor uh, to the ministry. We have those who are absent ministering, and uh, we give honor to Elder Reeves and to our praise team. We thank the Lord uh, for those who worked uh, at the uh, convention, the convocation. Amen. We know you're tired. We thank the Lord, Sister Clay, Sister Vivica. They were ushering. And amen, I know that they're tired. I am tired right now. Amen. Uh, one of the bishops got tired, and we want to pray for Bishop Eddie, and he wore himself down. I believe he was in the hospital. I just got off the phone with him, and he had wore himself down, but he's at home now. And he's, uh, yeah, there was a lot of work to be done. And so, uh, tired in body, but we're glad to be here. Amen. Now, I've said I was only going to preach 15 minutes before. I've said it before, but today I'm serious. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm serious. Praise the Lord. If that's all right with y'all on the internet, is it all right with those on the internet? That I preach 15 minutes. Amen. I know it's all right with those of us that are here. Amen. We love the Lord today. Um, let us go to the word of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Amen. Verses six through eight. 
1 Corinthians. Amen. If you see someone that doesn't have a Bible, share your Bible with them. Amen. I guess we got a whole house full of saints today. So if you see someone that don't have a Bible, say to them, neighbor, shame on you. If you didn't bring your Bible. Verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden myst- hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Look at someone and say to them, neighbor, I got to do what I got to do. Father, in Jesus' name, bless us today. Anoint the ears of the hearers. We thank you for the anointing you've anointed us with. Take us higher heights and deeper debts. Help us to leave differently. Give us all a word. And we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. I've got to do what I got to do. There are people, and it doesn't make any difference how rich that you are or what you possess. Jesus said that I am the door. And he that cometh in by me shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. He said that no man come to the Father but by me. What doth it profit a man if they should gain the whole world and lose their soul? Or what shall a man or woman give in exchange for their soul? John Lennon on one occasion says that Christianity will end. It will disappear. He said, I don't have to argue with that. I am certain. He said Jesus was okay, but his subjects were too simple. Today, speaking of the Beatles, he says, we are more famous than him. Marilyn Monroe, while filming on a set, was visiting, was visited by the late Billy Graham who says the Lord had dropped it in his spirit to go and to witness to her concerning the Lord. But she said to him, I don't need your Jesus. The story goes on to say a week later she was found dead in her bedroom. Thomas Andrews The Titanic shipbuilder, when asked about the safety of the Titanic, was quoted as saying that even God himself could not sink the ship. If we can bring it a little closer to home, Jay-Z calls himself Jehovah, the MC God. And so the question is today, Jesus asked his disciples, give me 11 more minutes. He says, whom do men say that I am? Whom do men say that I am? The disciples begin to go on and say, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah. 
You're John the Baptist because you're powerful. Jeremiah, because you're weak in you, there's a lot of concern. And some say that you're Elias because you're a miracle worker. Understand where Jesus is at the time that he asks the question. He is in a place called Caesarea Philippi. It is located at the bottom of Mount Hermon, where it is a mixed multitude of people who live there. You have Greeks, you have Romans, and you have Jews. There was a man by the name of Caesar Augustus who had brought peace by war to the Roman Empire, and he was known as the Prince of Peace. They also, in that particular place, worshipped a god by the name of Pan, P-A-N. And they would take flesh, and they would take sacrifices of flesh, and they would ask a question. Uh, am I going to have a blessed week this week, or am I going to have uh, get the job next month, or... Uh, is she going to marry me or is he going to marry me? Whatever the question would be. And they would throw the flesh into the pond. If it sank, the answer was no. If it rose, the answer was yes. Jesus asked the question, whom do men say that I am? And it is important that he asked that question as he did and when he asked it there because some were saying that Caesar Augustus was the Prince of Peace. And some were bringing flesh and throwing it into the pond. But Peter replied and said, Thou are not John the Baptist. You are not Jeremiah. You are not Isaiah or Elijah, but thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Uh, Peter recognizes and he, he, he's speaking in death because Caesar Augustus is now dead. Caesar Augustus, uh, the Prince of Peace, the, the son of Caesar, amen, who's also dead. But thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus replied and says, well done, well said, Simon, for what flesh? And blood that they're throwing into the water as a sacrifice, it has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. In other words, you don't have to come with a blood or a flesh or a meat sacrifice, but what is revealed to Peter and what is revealed in the church today is through the power of the Holy Ghost. You've got to understand, amen, it is the Holy Ghost that is the revealer of thoughts. It knows the intents of the hearts of men today. He is the Christ. Uh, come by and let somebody to know today that he is in the cry. He is the Christ. Many of the enemies of God today, they do not know who he is. Uh, many of your enemies today, they do not know who he is. The text lets us to know that if they would have known who he was, they would have never put him on the cross. They would have never crucified the Lord of glory. 
You know, oftentimes we are put in circumstances and situations, y'all pray for me now, amen, where our backs are up against the wall. Sometimes we were lied upon, amen, we're talked about, we're ostracized, and we're criticized. There are just some people that you will never be able to satisfy, no matter if you do flips frontwards or backwards, it will never be enough. You will try to smile and to be kind, uh, but they have a deep-seated hatred for some reason for you. Can I talk to you here? But there is nothing that you can do about it but pray for them that despitefully use you. Sometimes, amen, we don't understand where all the trouble and all the hell that we're facing, why is it coming toward us and what have we done to deserve it? Uh, you know, the enemies, you turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, you've got enemies. Uh, your enemy could be in your home. Your enemy could be on your job. Your enemy could be on the street. Your enemy could even be good God from Zion in the church. Because in the church, there are sheep. And there are wool, goat. Uh, in the church, there is wheat and there is tear. Uh, but we can't do nothing about the tear, but we got to leave them alone. We can't do nothing about the goats. We got to leave them alone. Uh, there is a purpose for the goats being here, and there is a purpose for the tear being here also. Uh, tear can make wheat strong uh, and goats can make sheep strong. Uh, so leave them alone. Look at somebody behind you, not next to you, and say, neighbor, you gotta leave them alone. Uh, I'm getting ready to close right now, but I've come by to let you know that sometimes when we're backed up in a corner, they would never have Crucify Jesus if they knew who he was. And that's how it is with the enemy sometime. If you knew by what you were doing to me was going to cause me to react in the way that I'm going to react, you would have never done it. Because I'm now going to get to the church house. I'm going to get down on my knees uh, and I'm going to give God some praise. Uh, I'm not turning my frustration toward you uh, but I'm going to give God some praise. Uh, I'm going to let him know Lord fix me uh, until you fix them uh, because my enemies are all around me. They seem to have encamped against me uh, but God thou art my rock uh, and my fortress. Uh, thou art my deliverer. Uh, God is my strength uh, and my buckler. Uh, he's my strong tower uh, and he is my help. Uh, turn to somebody before I close uh, and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God will fix you uh, until he turns it around. Uh, but when you put my back against the wall, uh, I'm not going to complain. Uh, you trapped me in a corner. Uh, and all that I've learned uh, to do is call on the name of the Lord. Uh, tell your neighbor, 
Say, neighbor, the battle is not yours, but the battle belongs to the Lord. How many of you know he will fight for you? He will fight for you. And if God be for you, he's more, more, oh, more than the world against you. I got to do what I got to do. Sometimes I got to clap my hands. Sometimes I got to cry tears. Sometimes I got to shout hallelujah. You don't know what I've been through to get to where I am. But I'm so, so glad that God has made a way. Has God made a way for you today? Did he bring you out of a horrible pit? Did he comfort you in the time of need? Did he strengthen you when you were weak? Uh, throw your hands up. Throw your head back uh, and say, yeah. Turn to another neighbor. I got two more minutes. Uh, and say, neighbor, I got to do uh, what I got to do. Uh, I feel uh, like I'm being uh, attacked. Uh, by the enemy but thanks be to God I got a praise on the inside hallelujah work it out work it out he will oh, oh hallelujah Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, glory. That old enemy. That old enemy. Whoever it is. They would never had put him on Calvary. Amen. They would have never talked about you. If they knew what it was going to cause you to do, it was going to cause you to get closer to Christ. It was going, it was going to cause you not to react in a negative fashion. See, when you're on the job and the supervisor is having a bad day, and they want to spread that bad day to somebody else. And they come down your aisle. They want you to feel the way that they feel. Little do they know that you serve a God who is the real Prince of Peace. Amen. Isaiah said, thou shalt call his name wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How many of you know today he is the Prince of Peace? How many of you know that Caesar Augustus is not the Prince of Peace? But there is a man by the name of Jesus, he is the Prince of Peace. Savior of the world. Can't nobody do me like he can do me. Praise be to God. Learn, let us learn how to react. Let us learn how to react to negative press. Let us learn how to carry ourselves under the attacks of the enemy. 
the Romans and the Jews, they would have never crucified him. The devil would have never put it in his spirit. Praise the Lord. The attacks come and somebody said, well, I'm going to do me. Amen. In other words, the way you bring it to me is the way you're going to get it. I've even heard people of God say, I got to put my Holy Ghost on the shelf. Who in the world will want to put their Holy Ghost on the shelf? Don't sit down on me, mother. Don't sit down on me now. Uh, help us, Holy Ghost. You know, you're not supposed to give it like you receive it. You're not supposed to put your Holy Ghost on the shelf. Jesus has told us and the, the theme of, and I know that I'm a little longer, the theme of the convocation was holiness is right. Stay the course. The scripture says that we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, and a chosen generation. The job of a priest is to be a bridge. Their job is to restore and to bring back together. And so it is our job as a royal priesthood to restore the world to introduce the world to Jesus to be a bridge between them and God. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he was talking about his priesthood work. He said, I'll draw all men unto me because man couldn't get to God. God was too holy to deal with man, so he sent his son to bring us back together again. And my brothers and sisters, we are a royal priesthood. Your life is an open epistle. It's read of men daily, and yes, we are to be holy every day. I don't want to be the cause of no man saying if being a Christian is being like him, then I don't want no part of it. I want them to be able to say that I want the same thing that they have. Whom do men say that I am? I got to do what I got to do. Amen. Sometimes you may have to walk alone. Amen. Sometimes mama ain't going to want to go. Daddy ain't going to want to go. Amen. Daughter and son ain't going to want to go. But I got to go. All the way, step by step. I want to see Jesus. I want to see him in peace. I want to Hear him say, well done. Everybody's on your feet right now. I remember running revival down in South Carolina, North Carolina, back to uh, Nashville for days, Myrtle Beach coming on back and amen feel just refreshed and ready for Sunday morning don't know if I could do that anymore 
He called the young because they strong. The old because they know the way. Let us endeavor to be holy. We are going to be attacked on every hand and side. But let our reaction when we are attacked, let us respond with praying for them that despitefully use you. Love your enemies. Amen. God wants us to be saved in here. He don't want us fighting in the street. He don't want us arguing and fighting on Facebook. We ain't got no business getting nobody told. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let's be holy. And the more you do it, the more you respond the right way, the easier it will become. Father, in Jesus' name, guess you want wanted your people to know about responding. So our response, because we're going to be tested this week, help our response when we're backed into the corner. Help it be a response of one that is pleasing in thy sight. Help us to pass the test. Far too often, Lord God, we flunk and we thank you for your grace and for your mercy, but for victory's sake, help us to pass the test this week. Help us endeavor and to put it on the top of our list that we're going to pass the test. And Lord God, we'll be forever grateful to give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that abides in our soul. Bless us right now. In Jesus' name, everybody clap your hands. Shout hallelujah.